Want more videos please like comment and subscribe neckbeard. Nice guy hoarder I realized I was a potential neckbeard and was nothing short of horrified. I'm only posting this to get it off my chest and I can't apologize to the girl I made so uncomfortable in school because we don't speak to one another anymore. This is mostly an admission of guilt. Some back story so you can hopefully understand where I was mentally at at the time. If you've ever seen a hoarder house that's essentially what I grew up in. No bathroom, no kitchen, no heating, no way to clean my clothes, and sadly no internet. I'm still bitter about how I grew up but am working through it. Which is how I came to analyze myself in this story. I didn't have the actual facial hair at the time, I do now although I shave it frequently, but I was overweight and probably smelled like my house, which wasn't pleasant I'd imagine. I didn't openly hate women but I shared some nice guy ideals at that time, which I've also looked into those guys and their way sadder. I'm definitely neither of these groups but I can now see how I sort of shared a few sympathies with that train of thought but for different reasons. That environment is not meant for a child and only births a bitter and dark mindset. I do in fact blame my mother for she is the root cause. I'm not going in depth on that here. To clarify I do not hate her but I do have a lot of animosity that I wish I did not. Anyway, I met her in school. I won't use her name nor mine and some things will be changed for privacy, still embarrasses me about how I was, we'll simply use the term girl. She moved to our school around this time and admittedly as a very beautiful girl. She seemed very cold but as I got to know her she genuinely opened up to me. I didn't see at the time how she liked me and then eventually didn't but she still wanted to help. At first we dated but it ended a week later as most of those relationships do. In my mind I felt I was worthless as this is how many of the past, relationships, went. Having that kind of mindset I didn't really move past much of it. I did remain an extremely loyal friend and she was too. We'd been through a lot together but I remember just generally reaching out for attention and hadn't got the memo that negative attention isn't good attention. So I'd grab hers by doing the whole suicide spiel. Now I had actually taken the swing from the rope a few years prior and that's a sort of funny story that I'll post elsewhere. Now as anyone knows that sort of person becomes very tiring to be around so inevitably when she got tired of my crap she still stayed but I also started watching anti-feminist videos at the time and was really pushy about it. But I remember jamming it down her throat one day when staying with another neckbeard I was also overly say asterisk UAL towards her which is what I'm ashamed about the most, but I remember forcing some links to videos on her and basically told her she had to watch them and then come argue with me, and of course she blocked me on everything. At first I wouldn't leave her alone even though she had asked me to. In my mind I felt very betrayed that she would block me over what in mind was something menial but she did. Fast forward about 8 months and my father has taken me from that horrid environment and into a much better one. She was friends with my best friend and got my number through him and rekindled the friendship. Great. I thought but I still hadn't really gotten out of my ways with her. She was a very intoxicating person to myself at the time. And I remember her talking about her male friends in a southeast asterisk UAL way and that set me off. I remember going on some tirade about how she was a whore and whatnot and then ultimately nice guide my way into oblivion. Ending the friendship with some very very nasty remarks, I would try to contact her but I don't think there is any way to recover from what I did and I believe she's definitely better off without me trying to apologize. I've since met my amazing girlfriend who has made me appreciate life like I never knew before. And have yet to tell her this story. I couldn't keep this in me any longer and I just had to share it. More of a therapeutic thing for me. So I'm sorry if it was a boring read. To any neckbeard out there read closely. You can change. Your mindset is the problem and only you can change that. It may be bad being a virgin but once you lose it and you think back to what you've done in pursuit of cat the guilt will far outweigh how you felt back then. That guilt will be worse than anything a woman could say to you. If there is an empathetic bone in you, you will realize making girls feel that uncomfortable is worse than suffering in silence. 
There is still hope for you I always thought I was heartless and amoral since I watched gore for fun, and I didn't care about people because I thought no one cared about me. People do, it's just whether you want to see it or not. To any neckbeard who thinks they are alone and no one cares, just wait. Wait for the person all those girls tell you is out there, because she he is. Please, it's best to suffer in silence and seek help later than acting out now because you believe you've got nothing after it and only the present exists to you. I may not have been deep into neckbeard territory, but I was a bad mix of neckbeard, incel, and most of all a nice guy. Nice is the bare minimum and you have to prove you're worth more than just a nice person. I'm still very depressed about everything but I've come to realize it's just my brain trying to force me down and that my mindset has to change in order for me to be happy. Lose that weight, fight your way out. Do what you know deep down would make you more confident in yourself. And please please don't take a swing like me. To the girl, I'm so very sorry and I hope I didn't affect you as negatively and that you brushed it off. Racist neckbeard oh fick I just remembered this guy. But beware I don't have a big story, it's more little events that I remember or was told. For a little context, first I'm French so if my English is ficked up I'm sorry about that, and second I was in preparatory school when I lived with this guy. I browsed this subreddit for the past two weeks and it's so funny, but at the same time kind of sad and infuriating. I'm going to call him Alexander because he was a big fan of Alexander the Great. He wasn't your typical neckbeard in appearance, because in France we don't have a lot of these, even if during school I used to be kind of a neckbeard and hanged out a lot with trench coat wearers, weeboos and furries, but sadly none of them actually wore fedoras. There was actually a trio of these guys that were called, the Three Canteen, I'm very likely going to write about these guys because they did a lot of crazy crap. He was more of a gentleman guy, with a big beard and good fragrance, and he wasn't ugly. I was in a literature school so most of the people that went there were kinda classy and clean on themselves. But this ficking guy, his behavior was the one of your typical neckbeard, smug and arrogant with everyone, passioned by fantasy and video games, he was mainly playing Total War, creepy with women and deviant sex asterisk uality, and of course his insane racism. We were four in this dorm room. Myself, probably average looking 18 at the time, but also super cringy with almost everyone things got pretty intense at some time, and probably the most, leftist, guy in the room, also I lived in these guys two months after the beginning of the classes because I figured out that taking a two hours bus trip every day to go to school wasn't for me and I wanted to make some friends, which turned out to be a good idea except for our neckbeard. Nicholas, not his real name but he liked formed president Nicholas Sarkozy, very good looking guy but did poorly in our class, he is a cool dude, he became my roommate for the two past year when we left this school because we weren't that much interested. He made fun of Alexander a lot but they got along, he is also a conservative Christian on some issue and it's probably because of this that they got along. Jean, still not his real name but he like French actor Jean Dujardin, tall and muscular dude, rugbyman and from a rich family, he was friendly but also could behave like an a-hole, was also quite racist and quite an edgelord. Now he has calmed down and is pretty swell guy to hang around but yeah during this time he was quite annoying. He absolutely hated Alexander, he changed of room three month after my arrival because he couldn't stand the guy anymore. He was a good student and did fairly well for what I remember. Alexander the awful, average looking dude, big beard. Actually he wore a trench coat but it was a Burberry, not a black leather one he is Jewish, which is relevant to why Jean hated him he wanted to be the perfect gentleman, he always spoke in this old and noble fashioned way, I'm sure he called a girl I know, my lady, once and with this deep voice to impress the women. He also smoked these big ass cigars and drank almost every night a glass of bourbon whiskey, because according to him, that's how a man rest after a long day of work. He had very good grades and was a top student, so the teachers liked him a lot, but the rest hated him, especially the girls. Prior to the first day of school there was the arrival of the people that lived in the dorm, so I wasn't there, but my Jean and Nicholas were there. And of course Alexander too. 
Nicholas later told me that when he met him he thought he was a well-mannered and cool dude. For the first 20 minutes. Because once everyone was installed they went around to meet some others people. And that's where they met Sarah, not her real name still, and Sarah was with her father that helped her settle in her room. So they see her outside of the dorm ready to say goodbye to her father when ficking Alexander, go straight to her, without even saying hello and ask her, if she has ever been with someone. In front of her ficking father. So things got weird and she just laughed it off while her father was fuming but he probably didn't want to make a scene so he let him go. But of course that was just the beginning of his antics. For the following months he made say asterisk UAL advances to all the girls he met, and of course all of them rejected him, so when I arrived, two months after the beginning of the classes Alexander already had a bad reputation. The first true experience I had with his weird and racist behavior was during lunch, for whatever reason he seemed pissed off so I ask him what is wrong, and I just hear him mumbling, I swear this crap is real, ficking blacks and they're ficking big cocks, and he just left with that. When I told Nicholas he was crying of laughter and so do I. Then one morning, it was in the beginning of December, it started to snow outside. I wake up and I see him naked in front of the window with his damned glass of bourbon in his hand. And outside I see some black guys were playing in the snow that was in an area with a lot of immigrant families so there were many black kids which seemed to annoy him. He looks at me with his disgusting grin and say, look Mirage, I immediately went back to bed. So yeah he had a lot of issues with black people for whatever reasons. Hope you guys found the story interesting. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe.